Hi and welcome to the page. I'm Ken Smith and this video is all about the lost auto manufacturers of the 1920s and 1930s. Why are they gone and what was their demise? While the automobile may have originated in Europe, few industries brought more diversity, ingenuity, expression, glamour, and statue as fully as the automotive industry did especially in the 1920s and 1930s. Add the development of aviation and the motion picture industry, and there became a real sense that the U.S. was entering a new and progressive era that almost any dream could become a reality. Hundreds of automobile companies sprouted out all over the nation at the turn of the 20th century, fueling the ambitions of people from all walks of life. However, not all of these ambitions actually materialized. Many companies foundered because of mismanagement, overexpansion, misjudgment of public taste, and underestimating supply chain costs. Same struggles that we actually go through today. Some companies in the early part of the 20th century whose products were electric vehicles or steam-powered cars just could not compete against the gas-powered automobiles that had more power and were cheaper to drive. By the start of the late 1920s, the big three, known as GM, Ford, and Chrysler, were dominating the automobile industry, and the smaller car companies were finding it harder to stake a claim in the new gold rush of industrialism that emerged just a decade earlier. The economic downturn in the early 1920s and the Great Depression that caused widespread economic distress and hardship spelled doom for many of these small car makers. Even though cars from these long defunct companies are no longer cruising on our nation's highways and byways, many of these obsolete companies developed innovations like disc brakes and automatic windshield wipers that have become standard features of today's cars. In compiling this list, I attempted to tell only a minute part of the story of these bygone manufacturers, their innovations of these companies and their ambitions and the segments they held in the marketplace. I also mentioned the causes and reasons these companies no longer exist. This list is not by any means comprehensive or extensive of all the companies that are no longer in existence, but rather it's a slate of companies that made an impact through their designs or innovations that helped move the automotive industry forward up to the beginning of World War II. The Anderson Motor Car Company was founded by John Gary Anderson who owned a buggy factory in Rock Hill, South Carolina. By 1915, Anderson saw the writing on the wall for horse-drawn transportation and converted his company into an automotive business. He traveled to the industry hub of Detroit to see how automobile factories were organized. The visionary Anderson wanted to turn Rock Hill into the Detroit of the South. He opened dealerships throughout the South and in Cleveland, Detroit, Boston, and New York City. Anderson also expanded into England, China, and Australia. His vehicles were too expensive for most customers, and his effort to introduce a lower cost aluminum model to lift sales foundered. Anderson stopped manufacturing automobiles in 1924. The Auburn Automobile Company, founded in Auburn, Indiana, was incorporated in 1903 after brothers Frank and Morris Eckhart became interested in the automobile industry. Their first car was a single-cylinder water-cooled vehicle that set consumers back about $1,450. Auburn vehicles became known for technological innovations and stylish design. The Eckharts left the automobile business in 1918 selling out to investors from Chicago. 
The company had its best year in 1931 when the company produced nearly 33,000 automobiles. Celebrities like Gary Cooper owned one of these prestigious classics. But Triumph turned to disappointment with the onset of the Great Depression and sales finally fell. Internal conflict and market pressures pushed the company into bankruptcy in 1937. Detroit-based Chalmers Motor Company started in 1908 and made high-end vehicles until 1923 when it merged with Chrysler. The company takes its name from Hugh Chalmers, the chief executive officer of National Cash Register Company. Chalmers left NCR around the turn of the 20th century to try his luck in the emerging automobile industry. A born salesman, Chalmers was also a huge baseball fan and saw an opportunity to connect his company with America's pastime. He created a marketing campaign that was nothing short of genius, and it would become the predecessor of baseball's most valuable player award by giving a car to the leading hitter in each league. In 1923, Chalmers Motor Company merged with Maxwell Motor, which ultimately was forming the basis for the Chrysler Corporation. The Dort Mortar Car Company was based in Flint, Michigan and operated from 1915 to 1924. Dort was founded as the Flint Road Car Company in 1884 initially. By 1917, Dort offered four models, two to Sands, an open tour, and a roadster at prices starting at just $695. Dort continued making cars until 1924. By then, the rising cost of developing and distribution of vehicles made it exceptionally difficult for the company to compete against larger automotive companies. The Duesenberg Motor Company, known for well-crafted vehicles in the early 20th century, made racing cars and high-end automobiles. Brothers August and Frederick Duesenberg founded the company in 1913 in St. Paul, Minnesota. They eventually moved the company to Indianapolis, home of the Indianapolis Motor Speedway, and built vehicles for racing. The company's luxury car was a pricey $8,500, and owning one was considered exceptionally prestigious. Celebrities were drawn to the vehicle, actor Gary Cooper among them. The Great Depression hurt the luxury end of the automobile market and Duesenberg finally collapsed in 1937. The DuPont family made its fortune by producing chemicals, but the family also made cars in the early 20th century. The company was founded during World War I to make engines for the Allied war effort. But after the war, the company made luxury automobiles in Wilmington, Delaware in limited production. DuPont's largest vehicle was the eight-cylinder Model G, which debuted in 1929. Four Model Gs competed in the Grand Prix of Endurance and Le Mans. The car drew fans, and DuPont made versions for sale to the general public. DuPont Motors halted production in 1931 because of the Great Depression and closed its automotive facility in 1932. After he was fired as CEO of General Motors, William Durant founded Durant Motors Incorporated in 1921. The company produced a full line of vehicles. In 1922, he bought luxury car maker Locomobile in a liquidation sale to compete in the high-end sector against Cadillac and Lincoln. He helped create dealer networks and marketing incentives for his employees and managed a sprawling network of decentralized assembly lines across the country. However, the company overexpanded and accumulated debt and the Great Depression led to its demise and the last car rolled off the assembly line in 1931. The Elkhart Carriage and Motor Car Company, later the Elkhart Motor Company of Elkhart, Indiana, lasted from 1915 to 1934. The company created the Elkhart Automobile, 
considered one of America's best made assembled automobiles in the early part of the 20th century. The company also was involved in the taxi cab sector, which kept people employed during the Great Depression that devastated the assembled car industry. The taxi industry would help sustain the company for much of the economic downturn. However, Elcar could not survive the entirety of America's worst economic crisis and eventually was dissolved in 1931. The Essex was an automobile produced by the Essex Motor Company between 1918 and 1922 and by the Hudson Motor Company between 1922 and 1933. The vehicle was small, durable, and affordably priced. The Essex is frequently credited by automobile historians, which started a trend towards enclosed passenger compartments that were affordable and distinct from open touring cars designs. Essex sales held their own through the 1920s, but began to slip down as the Great Depression took hold. The company debuted a redesigned Essex in 1930, uh, 1932, dubbed the Essex Terraplane. It survived the company, which went out of business in 1933. Cord was a brand of American luxury automobiles manufactured by the Auburn Automotive Company from 1929 to 1932 and again in 1936 and 1937. Cord innovations included front wheel drive on the L29, which was the first American made front wheel drive car offered to the public. The model 810 and 812, which was released in 1936 and 37, are probably the best known of the company's vehicles. They featured front wheel drive, independent front suspension, and hidden headlamps. In 1937, Auburn ceased production of the cord amid allegations of financial fraud and was sold to the Aviation Corporation. The Franklin Automobile Company, based in Syracuse, New York, created the Franklin Motor Car, invented by engineer John Wilkinson and produced by H. H. Franklin, an industrialist beginning in 1902. The vehicle had an air-cooled engine and flexible, lightweight construction during an era when other luxury car companies were making lumbering cars. The Franklins set many racing records in their day and were known for their handling, speed, and durability. Like some other luxury car makers, it did not survive the Great Depression. Unfortunately, Franklin closed its doors in 1934. The Heron Motor Sales Corporation operated from 1916 to 1920 and produced the Heron Automobile in Wayne, Michigan. The company was named after founder and racing legend Ray Heron, who won the first Indianapolis 500 in 1911. The company was incorporated in 1917 with $10 million in capital. The company was slow getting vehicles to the public because of delays in constructing the factory, which was designed to manufacture 24,000 cars annually. The company also was hampered by its inability to find a few new inventors. And Heron Motors did develop the Heron car, a four-cylinder 16 horsepower vehicle, but the company eventually closed its doors in 1922, succumbing to severe post-World War I economic downturn. The Hupp Motor Car Company originated in Detroit and was founded by Robert Bobby Hupp, who had worked at Oldsmobile and Ford Motor Company before striking it out on his own. His Huttmobile was a small vehicle that debuted in 1909 at the Detroit Automobile Show and became a big success nationwide. Among its admirers was Henry Ford. The vehicle was inexpensive and developed a reputation for its durability and reliability, 
which were especially important in the days before well-paved roads. The HUP 20 roundabout was selected as the first car used by the Detroit police force. The company was also known for its elegant advertising campaigns. In 1911, Hupp left the company and started another car business, all of which failed. Hupp Motor Car Company continued without him. It eventually filed for bankruptcy at the start of 1940 because of poor management. Jackson, Michigan was a hub for automobile activity in the first half of the 20th century. The city was the base for 25 car manufacturers from 1901 to 1954. Jackson Automobile Company, one of the first automobile manufacturers in Jackson, was founded by Charles Lewis, Byron J. Carter, and George A. Matthews in 1902. The first car produced by the company was a steam engine powered vehicle called the Jackson Steam Car. That six horsepower vehicle was powered by a three cylinder engine and hit the streets in 1903. The company also debuted a gasoline automobile the same year. The company stayed in the Matthews family until it eventually went out of business in 1923. The Kissel Motor Car Company was launched in 1906 by Lewis Kissel and his sons George and William in Hartford, Wisconsin. The company produced automobiles, hearses, fire trucks, taxi cabs, and trucks. During World War I, Kissel produced trucks for the U.S. military as well as other allied nations. Kissel's most famous car made from 1919 through 1927 was the Speedster nicknamed the Goldbug. The car was owned by some of the most famous personalities of the 20s, such as actress Greta Garbo, aviator Amelia Earhart, and boxer Jack Dempsey. Kissel's losses climbed, however, during the Great Depression, and eventually they went into receivership in November of 1930. A group of investors founded the Lexington Motor Company in 1909, based in Lexington, Kentucky. The company created the Lexington Motor Car a sleekly designed vehicle with a four-cylinder engine. The car's innovative design appealed to the public and a strong performance at the 1909 Glidden Reliability Tour generated an order backlog. The car also benefited from the talents of mechanic John C. Moore. His designs for an assembled motor car using components made by other manufacturers kept the cost low. The Lexington car competed in the 1912 Indianapolis 500, but like many car makers, the post-World War I recession led to the demise of the Lexington Motor Company, and eventually it was purchased in 1927 by Auburn. The Marmon Motor Car Company, founded by brothers Howard and Walter Marmon in Indianapolis, began building cars in 1902. The company would become famous for the Wasp car, which racing legend Ray Harmon drove while winning the 1911 Indianapolis 500. Marmon developed a reputation for reliable, speedy, upscale cars favored by celebrities such as actors Francis Bushman and Douglas Fairbanks. The company was known for technological breakthroughs involving V-shaped engines as well as innovations such as the rearview mirror and the use of aluminum in auto manufacturing. In 1929, Marmon introduced a car that cost less than $1,000, but the stock market crash that year worsened its financial woes and it eventually succumbed to bankruptcy. Maxwell Motor Company was founded in 1913. The origin of today's Chrysler brand, now owned by Stellantis, itself a merger of Fiat and Chrysler and Peugeot, are in the Maxwell Company. Jonathan Maxwell and Benjamin Biscoe made the first Maxwell car in 1904. Their cars at the dawn of the automotive industry boasted technological innovations such as using a drive shaft instead of the more common chain drive. In 1909, Maxwell sold 9,400 vehicles and was the nation's third largest automaker. 
the company sponsored the first cross-country drive by an all-woman crew. In 1920, the company, awash in debt and near collapse, convinced Walter P. Chrysler to leave General Motors to try to revitalize the company. Under Chrysler's leadership, the company began to make competitive automobiles. In 1925, the Maxwell Motor Company became the Chrysler Corporation. Moon Motor Car Company was founded by carriage maker Joseph W. Moon in 1905 in St. Louis and existed until 1930. The Moon Company was one of nearly 100 automobile companies based in St. Louis in the early part of the 20th century. The company developed a reputation for fully assembled mid-priced cars using high quality parts. The component quality required more extensive work, which led to operating losses. The Great Depression put the company out of business. The National Motor Vehicle Company, founded in Indianapolis, operated from 1900 to 1924. One of the company's presidents was instrumental in creating the Indianapolis Motor Speedway. The National Motor Vehicle Company first focused on making electric vehicles, but in 1906 stopped producing them, switching to gasoline-powered cars. The company produced various passenger vehicles from four to 12-cylinder engines and many racing cars. A National Motor Car won the 1912 Indianapolis 500. In 1922, the company was merged into an association of car companies that eventually went out of business in 1924. The Oakland Motor Car Company, based in Pontiac, Michigan, was named after the Michigan County of Oakland. The company was founded in 1907 by Edward Murphy, founder of a buggy company in Pontiac, Michigan. In 1908, Oakland produced a Model A costing $1,300 and Model E for $2,150. The company's rapid growth and accompanying financial pressures bore down on the company. General Motors Company, led by William C. Durant, saw an opportunity to bring Oakland into the GM fold, and Oakland became a division of General Motors. The company continued to make modestly priced automobiles right up until 1931, when the brand was dropped in favor of GM's Pontiac. The Peerless brand of cars in Cleveland was produced by the Peerless Motor Car Company from 1900 to 1931. Peerless was known as one of the three P car companies along with Packard and Pierce Aero. Peerless had a reputation for producing luxurious touring car models with a top price of $6,000 in 1905, the market turned against large touring cars in the, in the 20s and Peerless was forced to lower its prices and try to promote medium-sized cars. Peerless fell victim to the depression and closed its doors in 1931. The Pierce Aero Motor Car Company was a luxury car maker based in Buffalo that operated from 1901 to 1938. Besides luxury cars, Pierce Arrow also made commercial trucks, fire trucks, boats, and motorcycles. Founder George Pierce focused on the luxury segment and made a larger, more luxurious car for affluent customers. Pierce Arrow was considered the American Rolls Royce and was favored by US presidents and celebrities economic downturns beginning in the early 1930s hurt the company, which had difficulty competing against the luxury brands of the big three rivals, Ford, GM, and Chrysler. Pierce Arrow eventually closed its doors in 1938. World War I flying ace Eddie Rickenbacker founded the Rickenbacker Motor Car company in 1921 in Detroit. Rickenbacker used his World War I fighting squadron emblem of a top hat inside a ring to symbolize the company, which made sporting coupes, touring cars, sedans, and roadsters. Rickenbacker cars were too expensive for the era and sales were disappointing. 
The death of auto designer Walter Flanders was a major setback for the company. Rickenbacker, tired of company infighting, left the company in 1926, and the business closed in 1927. In a curious twist, the company's manufacturing equipment was sold to Audi and transported to Germany, the very country that he fought against in World War I. The Stanley Motor Cares Company was known for making steam-powered motor cars known as Stanley Steamers, although the company made other models too. Freeland O'Stanley and his wife Flora climbed Mount Washington in New Hampshire in 1899 in a Stanley Steamer. It was the first time any automobile had climbed the mountain, the tallest in northeastern United States. Gas engines made the Stanley Steamer cars obsolete in the 1920s as gas engines produced more power and had become easier to operate at a lower cost. The company finally closed its doors in 1924. Winton Motor Carriage Company was another Cleveland-based automobile maker that originated at the end of the 19th century, becoming one of the first American companies to sell a motorized vehicle. The company was founded by bicycle maker Alexander Winton, a Scottish immigrant who promoted his first cars by driving one to New York City from Cleveland in 1897. Wint was the first American company to sell a standard gasoline-powered automobile. It cost $1,000. By 1916, the company was producing almost 2,500 vehicles per year and had branches in New York, London, Toronto, and Honolulu. Winton failed to adjust to the introduction of less expensive vehicles produced by Ford and in 1924 ceased automobile production. Once again, I hope you enjoyed this video. Please remember to like and subscribe. Hit that notification bell. It's so important to us and it encourages us to continue to bring content to you. But most of all, be blessed.